Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I've made that clear many, many times. But Biden has been a catastrophe. So I will be voting for Trump. The liberal media foaming at the mouth in fury mm -hmm. that a Republican dares vote for another Republican. Nikki Haley revealing she'll be checking off Donald Trump's name in the ballot box this November, and it's triggering a tsunami of liberal tears that Nikki didn't pull a Liz Cheney. We need shrinks and, and cults. Um, experts to explain this because with what you're reporting it, it doesn't make a, a lick of sense to me. I am shocked that, that she would sink so low so fast and just lie about the facts as badly as she did. Haley of course may not have kissed the ring but she has certainly tried it on tonight. This is all about her personal ambition. It's not about the country. It feels so peak Nikki Haley. She kind of does that thing when you pull in a fish and the fish is like this trying to get something. It, it you mean like a flip-flop? Like a flip-flop? Okay, in a funny way, yeah. Flip-flop, 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 flip-flop. <laughs> Judge Janine, did they really expect that Nikki Haley was maybe just not going to endorse Donald Trump at all? Well, you know, I think there's... And endorse a, Joe Biden? I, I think there's a difference between endorsing someone and saying kind of at the end of a speech an answer to a question that you're going to vote for him. I see an endorsement as something where you show up with the candidate, uh, you have an event that is specifically around that idea, and to me, that's an endorsement. This was kind of a, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll vote for Trump. I mean, she really has to come out and say a little more than that for her to endorse him. But having said that, I, I am just so sick and tired of these people on the left saying that we're part of a cult. Uh, you know, get yourself a cult expert to analyze the half of the American people from afar, uh, because I'm tired of hearing about all of us being in a cult. But I think that Nikki did say something that's accurate, and she said that Biden is one of the worst presidents in history as it relates to uh, the withdrawal in Afghanistan, and that foreign policy is certainly her forte. But I'd like to see her actually do a real and political endorsement. Do you think we'll see that with those two on stage? Well, it takes two to tango, right? right. So, I mean, in order to have that kind of event, you have to have Trump saying, I want to appear with you at this well, event. She has and that to make could, the, so that could happen. Yeah, we, that, we don't know if she's made yeah, that so, offer Yeah, so and I think yet. this is sort of natural like and it happens when you think about like remember when Hillary and Obama were at each other's throats all that that whole summer and then what did Hillary do? She was like I'm for Obama, and then she went and campaigned for him, and even if she tried to undermine him a little bit, that's yeah. the way. Um, it would be good if the media would consider that why somebody would want to per have this position. Disagree with Trump, but think that Biden is a disaster. Um, Bill Barr said, Trump might be Russian roulette, but Biden is national suicide. Mm. There was a friend of mine's wife said, she doesn't like Trump, but if Biden wins, they're never going to be able to refinance their house. So people are making some practical decisions, and I imagine that the Trump team would say, we'll take those voters, we want them, too, because they know that they have to cobble all of these things together to make their coalition sing. Um, the other thing is that the, the left seems to think that you should say, OK, um, you might not like Trump, so that means that you should go over and vote for a guy that you, you think is a disaster for you. Like, that's just that's unrealistic. It's not going to happen. And I think, like, just looking at some of the reporting, Lawrence Jones just posted on X that he's been to a lot of Trump rallies. He's at the Bronx now, along with Johnny and Alexis McAdams. He says he's never seen anything like this. So something's happening out there. And again, like, you have to pull all these pieces together. I'm not saying it's a perfect picture, but you're starting to see mm -hmm. how a new coalition could be forming while Biden starts to fall apart. You do see things falling into place slowly by slowly, Greg. Mm hmm Just like your hair. You know, <laughs> you said practical decision. That's an adult decision. Nikki made an adult decision divorced from the kind of emotional dead end yeah. of never Trumpism. An adult decision is you don't have to like someone to know and appreciate their value. Who would you rather have? You know, an incompetent but likable agent or an arrogant shark who wins? You know, like it or not, Trump is America's agent, right? Mm -hmm. Not the world's agent. It's the basic definition, in my mind anyway, of populism. He's your agent and not theirs. Was Kamala a flip-flopper when she ended up working for a racist?
by her own definition, Joe Biden was a racist, kept her on the bus. Good point. You know, this is why the elites in both parties who profited off the back-slapping geopolitics found Trump so unseemly in the first place. They didn't want their cocktail party ruined by some unseemly rogue asking how much the cocktail weenies are or are you paying your fair share? The never-Trumpers cannot divorce themselves from the personal impact that Trump made on their on their egos. Uh, whether it's Mitt or Liz Cheney or Ki Kinzinger, there's a lot of ego and a lot of resentment built into it, and you call it a sunk cost. You know, once you marry yourself to so much emotion over so much time and you put so much effort into this, you can't reverse that stance. It hurts too much. They can't change their mind. So that when they see somebody do that, they, it, it burns them up. That's what you're seeing. That's why you're seeing a lot of these implosions. And it's, ha it's happened in political history. A lot of these times people tear each other's faces off mm -hmm. for a year before the election, <laughs> and then they break bread and come together. So I think her saying yesterday, Judge, that uh, her being Nikki Haley, Governor Haley, she's supporting Trump. If you're in a Trump campaign and you're, you're serious about the, 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 at, the, the numbers in a campaign, you want what she said yesterday, and you want what you said as well. Remember, since March 6th, which Mr. Trump has locked up the nomination since March 6th. Nikki Haley got 18% of the vote in Arizona in a closed primary, meaning only Republicans voted. She got 14% in Florida and 17% in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Um, so her saying at the end of the day, this is what's going to make, I'm going to have to vote for him because I don't want to vote for Biden, is something good for, for Trump. Now, on the flip side, Democrats do the same. Democrats are going to say, well, I may, I may have reservations mm -hmm. about Biden, but I can't stand Trump for mm -hmm. abortion right. January 6th. Yeah. What they did on, they'll have a number of reasons why, why, they, why they feel that way as well. Uh, finally, for those who care about the debt we were talking about, I think it's going to be really interesting to see these two campaigns talk about the economy. I think some of the headline stuff right now is interesting and it's predictable. But when you really dig into the numbers and you look at some of the things that are happening on the Republican side, there's a whole new movement of Republicans rising up saying that we want unions. We want higher tariffs. We want more government, more government spending. Now, that used to be the things that Democrats used to say. Now, you, th these, are, these are facts within uh, what's happening in the, in the Republican narrative. Mr. Trump, when he was in office for four years, ran up an $8 trillion debt. Mr. Biden, since he's been in office as of September 23, I don't have numbers since September 23, has accumulated a $4.7 trillion debt. So once we get into this, and I hope that's what the oh. debates are about. I hope that's what the debates are about. And let both of these candidates answer these tough Right in your face questions. And I hope even if the president being in the Bronx, I hope they ask him these questions as well. And any Democrat says he doesn't have the right to go there. You don't know politics. This is what politics is. Meeting voters where they are and answering their questions. Take that, AOC. Yeah, well, I'm AOC. just saying anybody. <laughs> yeah, that's coming Look, right when to I ran, you, AOC. When I ran, Harold Ford Jr. No, no, no. Yeah. When, I, when I ran for office, there were Republicans who told me I shouldn't go to rural areas in Tennessee because I wouldn't be welcome. That's same. nonsense. Of all right. of us, I did right. the same It's, it's silly. Yep. It's silly. It's just silliness. It's so silly. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.